Change is always good because without change, things would be boring. I think change is necessary. Without change, where would our country be today? Change, change, change. It's been going on all over Marshalltown. And what better place than right here than to talk about what's going on in downtown Marshalltown than with Jenny Etter, director of the Central Business District. Jenny, what's going on? All kinds of renovations going on. The Tall Corn Towers is um, getting close to completion. They're right on target with their renovations. Iowa Wholesale is starting and the McGregor's Blossom Building is uh, getting a facelift this year and will be done in August. Uh, one of the new uh, programs that we're taking on this year is the Floral Basket Program. We'll have 96 baskets on down Main Street uh, with wave petunias. They look beautiful every year. We're taking that over from Daryl Gaskell who uh, tirelessly did that for 12 years. And then we have the, the events that everybody looks forward to every year, starting off with the Farmer's Market on uh, May 29th. The Floral Basket Program always needs volunteers to help us hang them initially and then water them daily throughout the season. The Farmer's Market, um, our holiday stroll, um, all of those types of events need volunteers to keep them running and, and get them organized and, and uh, uh, carried off throughout the year. We're um, completing phase one of the pedestrian walkway between the APGAR and Tremont building. It will be resurfaced this spring and then we're looking at phase two, looking at murals potentially and artwork that will go in to help beautify the, the, the uh, pedestrian walkway. We're really working hard to, to renovate and restore and bring the downtown back to the beauty that it has been. To continue on with our theme of change, here at MMSC, there are lots of changes planned. To tell us more about those plans, here's John Hughes of MMSC. You know, I think what it means to us is it's kind of a continuation of what we've been doing for the last hundred years, but it also means a new thing. It gives us a facility that allows us to deliver health care the way we need to do it. Health is changing rapidly. This gives us an opportunity to adjust to those changes. The old facility, parts of it were 100 years old. Uh, a lot of the working uh, facility was 50, 60 years old. To remodel that became a big uh, issue for us. A little bit landlocked downtown. This facility gives us the space to grow, add new services, build a facility that's efficient and designed for outpatient care in a lot of ways. As you may know, most healthcare is moving from inpatient to outpatient, and that is increasing and accelerating. So this allows us to address those outpatient needs a lot more effectively. Yeah, phase one, primarily if you think about the outpatient services we deliver, surgery, rehab, imaging, those kinds of services, those will move in phase one. There'll be a little bit of outpatient left in the downtown campus, but most of the inpatient services will be delivered there. Phase two, the rest of that will move, including the ER, the cath lab service that so many people gave so generously to, that service will continue and move with us in phase two. Hi, I'm Mary Wurzberger and I'm currently the president of the foundation board and um, very excited to be here today for the groundbreaking for the new facility. This will be the outpatient facility and um, just very excited to bring the new technology and new processes that will be coming with this new building to Marshalltown. I'm David Barajas Jr. I'm the, the new CEO of the Marshalltown Regional Partnership. And so a project like this uh, has a great impact on our community. When you talk about and think about community development, economic development, really the, the top two topics on everybody's list, every community's list, is education and healthcare. So the fact that we have a lot of good, strong things going on in the education field, as we all know right now, and with the groundbreaking today of the Marshtown Medical and Surgical Center, uh, having a brand new medical facility here in Marshalltown and throughout the region is a big plus. Uh, people, when they're looking at coming to communities, when businesses are looking at investing in communities, 
whether it's a business we have here now or a business that may be looking to come here, they want strong education and strong health care. So this is just, I think, will be a big boon to the community and really to, uh, to the, uh, the entire region. And again, as we look at community and economic development, I think it's important to remember that regionalism is important. So we want to be able to do things and have facilities like this healthcare facility that attracts people also to our community for those services. So it's a big plus and we're looking forward to it. Uh, my name is Val Ruff. I am the executive director for the MMSC Foundation. And we're out here today with the, for the groundbreaking ceremony for our uh, phase one of our new facility for MMSC. And we're very excited about this opportunity to uh, build phase one of the outpatient so that we can continue to give excellent care only in a better, safer, healthier, healthier more modern facility. One of the ongoing programs in Marshalltown has been an excellent program put on by the Marshalltown Police Department called Citizens Academy. Discover Marshalltown was able to catch up with that class. Uh, my name is Captain Chris Jones. I'm the Administrative Coordinator for the Marshalltown Police Department Citizens Academy. Um, we're here at the introduction uh, opening of the Citizens Academy tonight and we have some volunteers, uh, nearly 40 volunteers that are going to be introduced to the activities of our police department in the city of Marshalltown. Um, tonight we have Mayor James Lawrence, uh, City Administrator Randy Wetmore, and Chief of Police Michael Tupper. Uh, they're going to give uh, an introduction to some city activities that are going on in Marshalltown. Uh, later this evening we're going to have an instructor, Brad Mosseth, who's a Marshalltown Police Department Community Outreach Officer. And he's going to discuss some uh, information technology that our department has available to the officers and then discuss our outreach programs in Marshalltown. Um, I'm Noelle Ricks and I'm here because I'm majoring in criminal justice so I thought this would give me a good opportunity to figure out my options. See, I told you not to be driving like that! You should have listened! Damn fool! <laughs> Like I said, when I go up, I like to have the spotlight directly on the rear view mirror. That way, you can't see me approaching. Um, that, that also gives my shadow. So I'll go outside of that so they're looking, that's still shining directly in their face. They won't see me coming up. When we get up here, we're going to check the trunk. We want to make sure this is latched. Okay? That way, nobody's going to make any surprises coming out of the trunk at us. When we come up here, now that it's starting to get dark out, we'll use our flashlight and we'll look throughout the vehicle in here that we're concerned about in the back. We'll always start with the back. Sometimes you're going to have rear occupants. If you have rear occupants in the car, you're going to probably start making contact right back here at the back of the car. Because what's the worst thing to do, officer safety wise, than blade your body right here where you got people back here that you're not watching because you're too worried about the people in the front. So typically what we'll do is we'll walk up. Now, and we're assuming these aren't like your eight year old children. We're talking about, you know, adults that are in the back seat. Roll your window down. Roll your window down. Hey, how's it going? You're looking in there, smelling around. You smell anything? Hey, kind of move up. I'm an officer for in police department. Hey, do you have driver's license registration insurance? The reason I stopped you is because you were speeding 35 and a 20. Do you have any questions? Okay, whatever. You get all the information. You get what you need. You get your exchange, and then you start to retreat. When you retreat back from the vehicle. You're retreating pretty similar to the way that you approach. You're retreating back. You're kind of walking back. You're just making sure that there's nothing that's going to jump out of the vehicle and surprise you. I'm Karen Reinbarger, and I'm here to learn um, what actually goes on in our town and what the fine officers of Marshalltown do and what I can do to help support them. I'm Nancy Park, and I'm here because a friend talked me into it. <laughs> but I, and he is there yet, by the way. But I'm here because I want to know how the police work, and I like to support them. He asked for the driver's license, and then... He said, well, I've got a permit to carry, blah, 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 blah. Would you then say, take we need to see your permit? Yes, you well. want to see the permit to carry. Yes, because if I he's thought. carrying a revolver, he's required to carry the permit with it. Now, if it's a long gun, he doesn't have, he doesn't have to carry that permit. 
with the long gun. It's a it's a glitch in the law. It'll it hopefully will get changed soon. So if you see a pickup truck and we got the old rifle on the back window, <laughs> not required. Not required. The Citizens Academy put on by the Marshalltown Police Department is a great program. It helps our local citizens understand what it takes to be a police officer in Marshalltown. Now let's head over to one of our schools to see what it takes to make a great student. Madison Higgins, Salvador Garcia Vázquez, Christopher Macias Mendoza. So we're always looking for those good things you do. You never know when you might be nominated. Under No Child Left Behind, all districts are obligated to monitor their average daily attendance. And there's a benchmark in there that's around 96% average daily attendance. That is that 96% of the students are in school on any given day. And Marshalltown has been able to meet that standard most of the time. So this has not really been an issue. So I thought, well, this is gonna be a piece of cake. We're already there. But in reality, there's a whole other issue underneath this called chronic absence. And that's looking at children who are missing 10%, 18 days or so of any given school year. And all the research shows that those are the children who are gonna have the greatest difficulty reaching proficiency in reading. And they're gonna have lots of other poor outcomes as well in their educational experience. So that put us uh, in a mind of trying to figure out um, three different ways of approaching attendance. One is sort of create a culture of attendance. Make sure everybody understands how important being in school every day is. Um, the second was, to reach out to uh, kids and families who may not have very much knowledge about attendance, especially with our population having come from so many different environments. So there's a lot of education we do, say at pre-K registration, uh, health fairs, uh, parent-teacher conferences, where we just try to help them understand that even in pre-K, even in kindergarten, even in first grade, a child being in school every day is very important because if they miss one day of school, it takes them three days to make that up. And if they miss 18 days of school, they're probably never going to reach the goals you might have for them with regard to their career and future life. So we've been able to do that. And the next step for us is there are about 126 elementary students across our six elementary buildings who are actually hitting that 10% of the school year loss. And some of them have missed 10% of the school year over multiple years. So we're looking at strategies that allow us to reach sort of the tip of the triangle then, um, those children and families who are having the most issues with attendance, and reach out to them to work with them on an individual basis. The attendance recognition ceremonies then are, are is a main, one of our first strategies that we had to help reach out and create that culture of attendance. And it's just wonderful. Kids who have had in some buildings it's just perfect attendance, some buildings it's good and perfect attendance. Our, all the children in the building are brought in for an assembly and then we bring in all kinds of community members. We've had community college students, we've had high school students, we have police officers, we have firefighters, we have George Taylor in his World War II uniform, we have you know members of the chamber, we have people from human services, and, and usually in a typical thing we'll have eight to 12 community members who will come in. And in different buildings, they do it different ways, but generally what happens is the individual students who've had this great attendance over the last quarter are given a sticker and they get a chance to stand up and have their hand shook by a community member. The community members are there to reinforce why it's so important for every child to be in school. And um, we've just been told that um, in Rogers, for example, they're seeing a real difference this year after a a whole year of those sort of recognitions in the attendance levels that the, their students have experienced, even in this terrible winter. Better attendance at our schools is very important. It helps us maintain our status as an all-American city. We'll be back with more Discover Marshalltown right after this. We are often asked, what exactly does the Marshalltown Area United Way do? We help people from all walks of life. We help families, babies, kids, teenagers, moms, dads, seniors, and those with terminal health issues. People who need hope. We improve people's lives. We invite you to be a part of it. MarshalltownUnitedWay.org 
one of the most exciting changes going on in Marshalltown is happening right behind me to the iconic Roundhouse. Here's the Deep Hobby side to tell us more about those exciting changes. Well, the uh, Marshalltown High School Roundhouse, our beloved Roundhouse, has such a tremendous history uh, for Marshalltown High School, but uh, not just Marshalltown High School, but the entire community of Marshalltown. And then anyone that you talk uh, uh, or speak about the Roundhouse, especially in other conferences and across the state, um, when you just say the Roundhouse, they know exactly what you're talking about. And so it does have a, a tremendous history and background, um, all kinds of amazing stories of the Roundhouse being packed, uh, not only for athletic events, uh, but also other community events and, and, and national organizations uh, coming to Marshalltown. And so originally it was built in 1965, and, and, uh, and since then uh, is just only one of three in, in the state, but ours is the largest. And uh, we haven't done any renovations to it uh, since then. And, you know, things have evolved uh, with not only our athletic but physical education program, but even the uh, uh, male and female uh, uh, sports and, and, and facilities. Um, originally, it didn't have design for female athletics, and obviously that has changed significantly over time, so there's a, a need for, for locker room facilities. Um, the renovation and the restoration and even the addition uh, here uh, is a significant uh, school and community project with $9.1 million uh, devoted by the school district and then fundraising uh, nearly $2.85 million uh, we are going to get a lot uh, uh, for that uh, money. First is the renovation and then the building of the new external facilities. Um, that is well underway and we're extremely excited about that. Uh, but uh, the community will, will see immediately um, additions, uh, in particular you, the new uh, locker rooms, um, uh, brand new locker rooms right there in the, towards the main front entrance and stacked on top of it is just an, a, a fantastic uh, weight and fitness uh, uh, facility um, and so uh, that will be stacked right on top and have a view out to the to the roundhouse. Then we have a new entrance, a new grand entrance instead of walking around the track you're going to walk right into the roundhouse and give that awe factor or that wow factor or even intimidation factor. Um, uh, and then uh, on the outside as well in the old entrance we're going to have the new uh, Hall of Fame as well as a athletic offices and so we're really excited for those uh, uh, things. And so there's just a lot of excitement um, at, uh, for this project uh, because I think the community uh, knows and understands it's so much more than just a, uh, a high school facility, but it truly is a community facility that will help uh, uh, improve and expand our programs and our offerings and our athletic uh, programs. But also it's going to be a draw. Uh, we want to become the school and, the, and, and district and community of choice. And I know I've heard from many executives that some of the first places that they visit are the schools, but in particular the roundhouse when they're recruiting people here to show them the uh, facilities that we have. And so it's an economic development issue as well. And so uh, we're extremely excited and, and, and grateful uh, for this uh, project and, and want to thank the entire community and our uh, district leadership, Dr. Uh, Marvin Wade, as well as our super, uh, our board, uh, and in particular board president, Sherm Welker, uh, and the design advisory committee. Other places in Marshalltown that have had some changes include the Marshall County Historical Society. They've revamped a lot of their displays lately, and we encourage you to stop by and check them out. In fact, Teddy Roosevelt stopped by the other day. Here's a little bit about that visit. Bully! Delighted to be here, my fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen. And take note that I say ladies, because the Progressive Party is the only presidential election party of 1912 that will fight for and demand a constitutional amendment granting women the right to vote. How can any society in good conscience grant that gemstone of American democracy the right and moral obligation to vote to an illiterate street sweeper because he's a man, then deny that gemstone 
to a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, or a nurse simply because she's a woman. Therefore, if you ladies will persuade your husbands, your fathers, your brothers, and your sons to vote for me in 1912, in 1916, you'll be able to go to the ballot box and vote for the candidate of your choice. Yay. Now, first of all, the name is Theodore, not Teddy. Only one person in my life ever had my permission to call me by that nickname. And when she died at the tender age of 22, that permission was never extended to another living soul. No one in my family or my close circle of friends would dare call me Teddy. But the newspapers will not call me anything else because they know it irritates me so. It's pretty interesting about Teddy Roosevelt, isn't it? In fact, you can catch his entire presentation later on Mick TV. Look for future airings on our website. So as you can see, there's lots of changes going on in Marshalltown. We hope you've enjoyed the changes to Discover Marshalltown. We encourage your comments. For Discover Marshalltown, I'm Andy Schwant.